Smithy of Malgarth, Part Two. Fingers stroked through the hair one last time, to be sure. Yes, the beard looked good, he decided. He was pleased with the sharply defined edge and neatly trimmed follicles. They added a certain image he was proud of. He had certain standards to maintain, after all. He turned to look out of his office window. Several dozen lights flashed in the clouds below him, indicating more new arrivals to his domain. They would be processed by one of his rangels and put to work somewhere within his vast organisation. The spires were lit and his will was in the process of being distributed. Today looked like it was going to be a good day. With his beard primed, he adjusted his robes, turned and walked towards his desk. As he did, documents, files and folders started to materialise on it, arranged in neat, orderly rows, stacked for efficiency of space and colour-coded for ease of inspection. He sat in the plush, leather-backed chair and shuffled it forwards into the small nook moulded into the desk. Everything was in arm's reach. Coffee cup, fresh fruit, pastries, notepad and hammer. He picked up his gold quill, dipped it in ink and began to write. Somebody knocked on his door. He raised an eyebrow of curious inquisition. This was unusual and ominous. Good news never followed such a timid knock. Draw, he commanded. His voice reverberated the very fabric of the universe as if amplified by hidden speakers in the walls. The door opened slowly and a small face peered inside. It was one of his rangels. This one had a smaller halo than the others, obviously a new entrant tasked with delivering unsatisfactory news. My lord, we are sorry to be disturbing you. Uh, we must report to ye a paladin in your divine domain has been slain, he began as he drifted towards the desk on silent feet, the door slowly closing behind him. So, send him for processing like any other new arrival. Why do you trouble me with this mundane event? My lord, we are unable. A request for revivify was received. So send them back then. My lord, you asked to be informed any time an artifact was detected. Uh, I'm afraid this gem used to revivify him has been touched by your sister. It started somewhere deep down and quickly gathered momentum until a flash second later he was stood, hair and beard aglow with divine energy, his fists clenched and every celestial muzzle in his avatar tensed ready for immediate action. His chair had seen this before and quickly scooted back, taking evasive action before the inevitable thunder arrived. Thunder cracked the room, lightning flashed from his eye sockets and every glass goblet, window and decoration shattered. The sudden change in air pressure resulted in explosive decompression to most of the office. Scrolls and documents fluttered through the air, some with tendrils of smoke and fire licking at the edges. He roared his outrage and fury at being defied again. Grasping a shard of electricity, he chose at the last instant not to smite the cowering rangel before him. Instead, he turned his desk to granite so he could smash it to dust with his mighty fists laced with red-hot fury and lightning. When he had finished with his desk, he smote the office and every object in it. When the dust had settled, his rangel was barely visible. Debris and detritus littered around him up to his waist and he was covered in a thick ash. The top of the building was missing, and they were perched atop a slender spire jutting out of the clouds. Uh, clearly, I have upset you, Master. Yes, I am deeply vexed. This cannot be permitted. She was told like the rest of us. She risks exposing, nay inviting Armageddon. When the betrayers realize we have betrayed them and are not playing by the rules, they will start open war. This is folly. She knows this, that her mortal soul corrupts her wisdom. He walked over to where his desk used to be and created a new one with a click of his fingers. His chair rematerialized from whatever plane it hid on during the office carnage and slid into place as he sat down. It comforted his divine buttocks with a light massage whilst gently heating up to allow his muscles to relax. Where is this paladin now? 
Uh, we have him on hold, Master. He wishes to make a complaint and speak to somebody in authority about a bacon and egg sandwich. Does he mock me? No, Master, he's quite serious. A vast book materialised from the ether and a quill was conjured. It began to pour over the endless scrawling lines of writing, all seven of his fingers dancing across the letters. Ah, yes, smithy of Mulgarth. He is the wielder of the one's most blessedly holy sword of death and fiery justice, Master. Oh, he's got one of the old models still. I forget how many of those we made. Well, if it still works, let him keep it. Give him his bacon and egg, whatever he wants. He slammed the book closed with a thunderclap across time. Standing, he summoned his cloud and stepped onto it. I need to visit the others and see what retribution my sister deserves this time. He floated away from his now derelict office and the spire that held it, leaving the forlorn Rangel behind, wondering how he got down. Ah, uh, Master, how long are you going to be? Master? Out of. He had certain standards to main... He had a voice and he could speak sometimes. And sat down. No, he didn't. This is really badly written. Who wrote this bullshit?